<laughs> on a smooth Wednesday afternoon, how's everyone doing? It's the Teddy Bear. Welcome to the zone of Night Tracks Radio. And today's artist spotlight gifted singer, vocalist, captivating extraordinaire, Shelby J with her new hit single, about to be smelling like Thanksgiving. Lord have mercy. Welcome to the show, Shelby. How are you doing? I'm doing so good. Thank you for having me. No, the pleasure is mine. I love your voice and your live performances are incredible, my queen. Yes, Thank Lord. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Teddy Bear. <laughs> my pleasure, love. I got it. You know, I want to I want to delve deeper as okay. far as Thanksgiving. All right. You know, we're both 21. We've been around the block a few times. Couple. A couple times. Thanksgiving has always had a very special meaning as far as family is concerned. Yes. And I see in today's society, we get somewhat caught up in doing our own thing. And a lot of times families, we lose touch with one yes. another. Uh, I remember vividly where my mother, my auntie, and other family members, we would get together on Thanksgiving and have these big spreads with turkey, but the sweet potato pie, everything that you can imagine. Yes. And then we get caught up in life. Yeah. And we lose track. So I wanted to ask you from your personal perspective, what does this new single mean to you? Wow. It means um, just getting back together, the fellowship of it. The song came to me. I have to start with how the song came to me. Okay. I lost I lost my mother, my beautiful mother, Mamie J., um, who was loved by all. She was full of joy. My mother was the personification of joy. And she passed away in 2020, right before Thanksgiving. Okay. And so that first Thanksgiving was was kind of different and it was rough. And the very and we were in COVID. This was also during COVID. And so people weren't getting together anyway. Um, right. And then 2021 came around. Um, you know, life happened. I, I relocated. I I basically had to figure out how I wanted to honor my mom during Thanksgiving. And I started, I said, you know what? She would want me to celebrate this. She's not here anymore, but she prepared me for her not being here. And she prepared me with her, her wisdom, her love and her recipes. So I was in the kitchen and I started cutting up onions and celery and my sister was <laughs> standing over there, my sister Lynn, who's also my drummer. So anytime okay. I start singing, she starts beating on something to keep the beat. No, so right. as I'm preparing this food, I, you know, we're still sad because we're missing mama. You know, that's real. And so I, I took the dressing, but we're, we're pushing through, you know. I put the dressing in the oven and I'm telling you, maybe three or four minutes once it was cooking, the whole kitchen, it just, the smell just came out and it just took me back. And I was like, it smelled like mama was in the kitchen. I felt her energy. I felt the presence. The smell took me back to all of those good Thanksgivings when she would be making these beautiful dishes, the dressing, the turkey, the cranberry. She had a special dish for the cranberry. She would lay everything out, the macaroni. So I, I told her, I said, you know, it's about to be smell like Thanksgiving up in here for real. <laughs> and so I started singing that, you know, I was, and, and I was singing about to be smelling like that. And she started beating on the on the counter and i came up with it and i just kind of recorded a little bit of it in my phone like i do when i come up with songs when they come to me because i like to tell people songs come through me i'm right. the vessel i let it come through me and i i try to capture it because i'll i'll forget something else will come through me so i needed to record it but that song captures that energy of loving the fellowship. And because we couldn't be together, sometimes you don't miss what you have until you can't do it. And right. people were alone in their homes during Thanksgiving in 2020 and 2021. And now this Thanksgiving, I mean, we still, you know, got to be careful, but this Thanksgiving, we, we've come over the hump and people will be getting back together, fellowshipping. The cousins are coming over. Somebody going to set up the card table. Uh, who's bringing a potato salad? I mean, all of those <laughs> things that we remember. This is how I grew up um, with the fellowship and the family the food, the fun, the football. And I want this song to capture that for the whole world, even places 
that don't celebrate Thanksgiving have let me know they feel in this song. They're like, we don't even celebrate Thanksgiving, but this is our new anthem for y'all. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story behind the song. One of the things that I love about the song, the message, because it incorporates and it surrounds family, yeah. relationships, cultivating relationships. As you said, life is unpredictable. The next day yeah. is not promised to any of us. Let's enjoy this love, this fellowship yeah. with one another. <laughs> Let's enjoy this fellowship with one another. When you lose someone that's the matriarch of your family, yeah. how do you deal with that from an emotional standpoint? Because I can only speak for myself. I lost my mother in 1989, mm -hmm. and I'm still dealing with it from an emotional standpoint. So I'm asking you, how have you managed to kind of balance that kind of emotional, emotional tidal wave dealing with the loss of your mother? Wow. It has everybody that knows me. My mother was my best friend and um, I am my mother. And the older I get, the more I see <laughs> my sisters tell me like you are so mama. <laughs> but when during my mother's last 10 months, I was her caregiver, sun up to okay. sundown. And um, she was diagnosed with cancer during COVID. Uh, all of my gigs got canceled. So I was able, thank God, as I look back on it now, it was God working. I was able to be with her sun up to sundown and be her caregiver. And we really couldn't have too many people in the house because it was COVID. So right. and a lot of people didn't even know what was going on. And that was her choice because that's, you know, when you're dealing with an illness, it's your choice when you want to share it, the who, when, the where, the why. And being with her, laying with her, watching television, uh, t listening to her talk to me about life. And we just had some really special moments. And the one thing that I remember her saying, coming back to what you asked me, she told me, she said, she, I said, mom, I was crying. I said, mom, I'm gonna miss you. I don't know how I'm going to make it without you. I, 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 I don't know what this is. You know, you, you like, you can't leave me. And right. she said, Shelby, she said, she called me poo. She said, poo. She said, I'm your mother. She said, now, she said, and if I have not prepared you to be here and to be able to shine and grow and to continue without me, then I haven't done my job. Mm. And I said, wow. And I, when I looked at it like that, because she was such a graceful, I've never, I never saw anyone face um, death with so much grace. I mean, that's mm. the only way I can look at it. And I hope that when my time comes, I can be as graceful um, and as peaceful as she was. And it's just, it, she, it helped us. Her, right. her, her dealing with it really helped us. But when she said that, um, she said, you know, I've, I've been preparing you for this. So I'm going to need for you to remember what I taught you and to move, take that forward. Um, and, you know, you go through the sadness because I love my mama. And right. so I, I, you cry, you miss. And, but then you, I start hearing her, you know, the, I start remembering uh, the, the things that she would tell me. And now I, I'm telling my friends and I'm speaking to them and giving them that wisdom, but it's coming from my mama. It's not coming from me. <laughs> it's stuff that she <laughs> poured into me. And that knowing that, you know, she gave Lynn and my sister Kim, she gave us all of that to carry on. She still lives. And so that's how I, I deal with it. And with the holidays, I just remember her recipes. We're going to be cooking her food. We're going to be looking at photos of because I, I'm, I'm that person in the family. I take a gazillion photos and I keep them all and I categorize them because that is our legacy and our history. And right. it's important to remember that. I want my niece and my nephew as they move forward to know what their great great grandfather looked like and what his name was and what he did and and that's it's important for legacy um all of us all of us will take that trip to the other side but it's important to try to do some good while we're here try to spread some love while we're here and my mother did that absolutely and for those who are tuning in late shame on you but the teddy bear does forgive you we're being joined today of course <laughs> by the super talented Shelby J. I got to ask you, yes. you have had the opportunity to tour this entire planet, played not in theaters, but in stadiums, sold out yes. stadiums. How do you go from that trying to deal with when we go as far as dealing with COVID yeah. being 
<laughs> they basically on lockdown because I've seen you perform several times and your energy level is on a whole nother level. Oh, so how do you, you go from that and trying to balance? Wait a minute. I'm not performing now. I mean, it's COVID. So how do I, <laughs> yeah, how do it I was, deal with that? It was different. I tell you what I did do. Um, me and Mama, we watched a lot of videos. I watched a lot of performances. <laughs> I did. I watched a lot of stuff uh, on YouTube of me with Prince, me right. with D'Angelo, uh, me with Anthony Hamilton, me with my band. And also during that time, I found that I got a lot of writing done. A few things, when one thing stops, there are other parts of me um, that started to bloom. I crochet. I always crocheted as a hobby and also to give gifts to everybody in the band. If you had a baby, you were getting a, a baby blanket made by me. I made I made Prince a blanket. He was a, and he walked around in his blanket like he was Linus, you know. Oh my <laughs> but during that time, I somebody said, "Hey, I want to buy a blanket," and I wasn't on tour. So I was like, hey, I, I'm going to start doing this and make it into a, a business. And so it became Crochet by Shelby J. And now I have a waiting list of like 13 orders right now for people oh that goodness. want blankets for 2023. But that's how God works. It's like one one thing might slow down. And he's like, well, Shelby, you have these other gifts. You crochet, you paint, you write, you do this, you know, cultivate those things and find ways to have um, different streams of income, because as an independent artist, that's very important that you try to have multiple streams of income. And I hope COVID woke everybody up because that could happen from you losing your voice, God forbid, or anything that happens that takes you off of your whatever your number one stream is. You need to have a number two, a number three, a number four, and, and let it be something that you really love. Because right. I, I only want to do things that I love to do. And if I right. can support myself doing those things, that's that's a win win. So that's how I dealt with, you know, COVID, just just getting into those things and developing those. I remember an interview that you did a couple of years ago, and you really put the emphasis on the importance of cultivating relationships, cultivating true friendships, Yes, because friendships mean everything and I'm, as you're aware in this industry that we call music you have people that'll pretend to be one way and are completely different yeah <laughs> facts the, the other yeah. You, have, you have gone through the gauntlet and now what does it mean to you to be an independent artist to have that level of creative control over your music well, it means a lot. And this single I put out on my sister's label, the Genre Music Group. And okay. my sister is a boss. She is, <laughs> she, is a, she is amazing. And she started her label many, many years ago. And it was always my dream to be able to collaborate with her. And we're going to do much more. But I have full creative control. And I can bring in different producers. I can bring in different musicians. I can really just do what I want to do, which is what I would always say, you know, ain't nobody telling Picasso what to paint. You know, if you're a true artist, <laughs> then, you know, be a, be a true artist. And so I don't, and, and also with that, sometimes when you make art, everybody might not feel it because it's right. not for everybody. So if you get into a situation as an artist where you've got person A, person B, person C, and if, and if you play it for them or let them hear it and they don't like it, suddenly it's no good anymore. And you right. might just step away when that could have been your a million seller. Like I remember Prince telling me about Kiss, the song Kiss. They didn't think that was gonna be a hit. He had people telling him the song Kiss was not gonna be a hit. I'm, I'm, I'm my hand to the man. So you just never know. There's billions of people in the world. So for every two or three people that, that don't feel something, there's a gazillion other people out there that this just might be what they were looking for and they'll feel it. So there's there's something in, in everything you create has value. Right. And so it's just about creating art and putting it out and not not wondering who's going to like it or or, you know, letting that stop you or right. letting that, you know, or trying to, well, what's, I'm going to do the beat of the week because this is what's hot. It's like, just be <laughs> an artist and just create what you feel, right. you know, and try to be authentic. And be true to oneself, which is yeah. important. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of 
Picasso slash Mozart, Prince Rogers Nelson. Yeah. I've only seen one other female vocalist that had that kind of yin and yang that you had with Prince. And that was Rosie Gaines. Rosie. Woo, all hell. Woo. And to see you with him on stage was something magical. It was unique the way you two just, it was like you knew what each other was thinking in the performance. And I want to touch on that a little bit. What did it mean to you, not just to be a part of his life, but just to know the man as far as off the stage, just in corporate where he's just invited you into his life and just know him from a personal standpoint. Yeah, I still pinch myself sometimes, you know, because here I am, Shelby Johnson from Greensboro, North Carolina, you know, <laughs> Mamie, Mamie and Ernest's daughter, you know, growing up in Woodley on the South Side, calling bingo down the street as a teenager, having a dream to sing. I just wanted to get on a microphone. I didn't care what microphone it was, but I just, I, everybody that knows me, this is who I've always been. You know, right. you're not going to meet anybody that says, yeah, Shelby was so quiet and reserved. And so I just kept being me. And, and when I met Prince, the thing that, that really, um, that he told me, this is what he told me, um, he understood me. And after he met my mother, he really understood me. But I just, I was always, I tried to, I had people telling me, don't do this, don't say this and whatever. And a lot of times those people will be gone in a week and I'd still be, <laughs> for some reason, I'm st I ain't got sent home. I'm like, listen, I'm gonna be who I am. When he met me, I was in some Timberlands and a baby fat jumpsuit and a camouflage hat with some cornrows. And he and he and he loved me then. He saw that. That was Shelby. And right. he saw who I was. And then even when I shaved all my hair off, he was like, I see you. And he was like, be you. You have everything you need, Shelby. Just be you. But the fact that he allowed me to into his world, the fact that he taught me so much, the fact that he would take me with him like off stage, like I'd be in my hotel room. And I, my phone would ring and he'd be like, Shelby, we're leaving in 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> and I wouldn't even care. Like, I'm that girl. Like, I'm not like, where are we going? Who's going to be there? What are we doing? I'd be like, all right, let's, let's go. Let's, let's go. ride. And you need, and, yeah, and he, and he, he was the kind of person he really needed that. Like he wasn't going to spend a lot of time explaining and anything. So if you were that kind of person, you might not get that call. <laughs> so but I, but it's still when I when I think about all of the places that I've been able to visit, all of the people I've been able to meet, the, how he opened up the whole world and said my name, Shelby J, Shelby J, so that people in Belgium know my name, people in Australia know my name, people in London, people in Africa, so that now as I move forward. He really set me, he co-signed it. He really set it up for me to just go and, and do what he taught me and right. what he poured and what he poured into me. But I never for one second forgot that that was Prince and he was the greatest artist of all time. Um, he was my brother and I love him. I miss him every day, but I, I'm just so blessed. I feel so fortunate to have been allowed to be in his world like that and for him to love me the way he did. And he showed me that he loved me, you know, because my sister says it's, it's not what people say, it's what people do. So Absolutely. watch what people, watch what people do that yeah. will show you if they love you. And he Absolutely. showed me that he showed me that. Welcome to America. Lord have mercy. That, <laughs> that my goodness, an incredible tour. I got to ask you, and I'm a little bit jaded. Now you've teased us with this new single mm -hmm. about to be smelling like Thanksgiving. Yeah. When, when can we expect an album or an EP from you? It's long overdue. 2023. I mean, COVID happened. I mean, listen, <laughs> things were things were in the works, and then I had to kind of put a pin in everything. Right. And uh COVID and mama, but I've really, I mean, I've been recording over the last six months. I've I'm collaborating with Kalindo Parker, uh, okay. who is Janelle Monet's guitarist. Um, he's a phenomenal another North Carolina from the from the root he's Maceo he's related to Maceo Parker as well okay. um Darren Tripp Thomas 
uh, my my boy Butter in New York. And the beautiful thing is, during this time during COVID, I had time to write a lot. I didn't. I couldn't get into the studio and do what I needed to do. But now I engineer and I record myself. And so I recorded my own vocals for about to be smelling like Thanksgiving. I engineered okay. that myself, um, and we pieced it together. So with technology. I can be one place, my producer or my collaborator can be in another place and we can piece it all together. So get ready because in 2023, you will have a new Shelby J album and it won't be December of 2023. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'll be touring. So just get ready. I will put out a single like probably like March. So yeah. So I'm just, I got so much. I have more music than I know what to do with. So it's just a thing of serving it up. Which one comes first? Oh, right. And you have so many supporters. I don't like to use the term fans because it comes across as being very genetic. Um, you have so many supporters who love you and love your music. What has it been? What has it meant to you to have that level of love and support? in this journey of yours wow it means a lot because you know people buy tickets to come see you people buy records and and music and downloads and the thing is i love sometimes i would stay up till three four in the morning on facebook answering people because it meant so much to me that something i would put up they would comment and say this touched them thank you shelby and i'd be sometimes i wake up with the laptop you know on me because i'm just I'm grateful. I'm I'm so grateful because I remember when when nobody cared. I remember, you know, all the gigs where I'd be singing and there'd be one person in the room and you know, maybe you get paid, maybe you wouldn't. And so now that I have all these supporters um showing me love and they show me love, like even today, a supporter was like, Listen, I have Apple Music subscription, but I want to buy your single. How do I do it? So I was like, they, I was like, okay, go to the iTunes store, and then you <laughs> go to that app, and then you can click it, and then you can buy it. They they can stream my music for free, right. but they, I mean, I still get some because I wrote songs, but they want to buy it to support me because they know that everything they do for me like that, I always say it keeps the train on the tracks. Right. Um, right. It pays for studio time. It helps me with everything I'm doing to move everything forward in this Shelby world. So right. I just, I'm so thankful. I say that word a lot, but I mean it. Just the the immense gratitude I have for people buying all of my music. I have people now going back to get my Black Gypsy album. They're like, what's that? Because when you buy something, you know, it says more from this artist. Right. So they're like, we didn't know about the Black Gypsy album. We didn't know about this. So they're, they're doing a deep dive on okay. other other songs i've put out so i'm just happy to get the love and thank you all everybody out there and for those of you who don't already follow can i shout out my social media absolutely for those of you that want to join shelby world and are not in shelby's world yet every day i'm doing stuff i'm making playlists i'm talking to folks come on over it's at the real shelby j that's on twitter instagram and facebook and we got some uh, new platforms that we're launching next week. So get ready. Absolutely. Now, what about these? Now, I've seen now, I've been brought to my attention. We have coffee mugs, T-shirts, hoodies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, yeah. I definitely, I have merch. Um, I have a Shelby J collection right oh. now that is available at Branded. Uh, my my fabulous uh, team member, Monica, I call her Ladybug. Everybody know Ladybug. Uh, she designed my supernova, okay. which looks like a sun and stars. And um, on my pages, you'll be able to go and you can click. I've got hoodies. Everybody sees the supernova is spreading love and light. Prince called me a superstar. She called me sunshine. She put it together. That's how the supernova became. And we have it in different colors, t-shirts, everything. So go on over there to brandedbymjm.com. The link is on my page. Okay. It's also in my link tree. And uh, you can support. Now, these things are coming down the pipe. These here, these, oh these, okay. yes. This right here, <laughs> we're doing give, we're doing giveaways because we got a big contest that we're announcing okay. next week. So these are going to be giveaways. But I might have to put these in the store. I might have to, might have to put these in the genre store or something and and see what's happening because everybody wants a mug i didn't you know they were going to be for the gifts for the people i'm doing contests you know 
Absolutely. Well, put me down for a couple because I would definitely love to have my hands on the mugs. They look uh, really great. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Look, thank you. <laughs> I designed that. I designed it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. So yes, many, with, with Courtney. So, so many different levels to Shelby J. And remember, family, get the new single. That's important. Of course, about to be smelling like Thanksgiving. What was the best part of Thanksgiving for you? As far as Ooh. food, what did your mother just really, just really put her foot in it? Was it collard greens? Yes, <laughs> collard greens, <laughs> collard greens, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, Teddy Bear. <laughs> Listen, with the chow chow on the side, and my granddaddy would do the the pickled uh, green tomatoes, spicy uh -huh. with the peppers, and uh, and Miss Helen down there in Virginia Beach. Shout out to Miss Helen. <laughs> Um, but yeah, mama's collard greens were it. I mean, she would make them. She worked at North Carolina NC State University and she would every year at Christmas, she would give uh, containers of collard greens as gifts and people want, they were like, well, please, Miss Mamie, is it time for the greens yet? Is it time for the greens yet? So, you know, her collard greens, she put her whole foot and half a calf in them greens. Mm, so it is written, so it shall be done. It's a beautiful thing. Remember family, Catch up with Shelby on all of her social media platforms on Instagram and Facebook, the real Shelby J and also her product line. That's at www.brandedbymjm.com forward slash collections. You have to do that. I cannot yes. wait. Hopefully in 2023, you will bring your captivating self down here to Texas. I would love to see you. Oh. Perform. I'm coming. Yes. Shout out. First, I want to congratulate y'all on the World Series win. Okay, yes, Houston. Okay, all right. And my boy Craig Alexander is down there. And my purple brother, he okay. basically was the architect behind Prince Day in Houston. So okay. we're talking now about getting me down there in 2023. It's happening. Trust and believe that. I'll let you know, Teddy Bear. Please do. Please you got do. tickets. You got tickets. And a mug. I bring a mug. I hand deliver a mug to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, my queen. I want, first of all, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us this evening. And also, I want to send out a very special thank you for sharing a large part of your experience with Prince to us. Um, oh, my pleasure. I have been following that man since his first album. Mm -hmm. And when he left us, it hasn't it hasn't been the same. It mm -hmm. hasn't been the same. It's just something just not right. But I want to yeah. thank you for carrying on his legacy and doing beautiful music. And I cannot wait for your album to come out much continued success to you okay thank you teddy bear it is my pleasure <laughs> that man changed my life and i will continue to wave that flag and uh myself and other protégés and people i call us the purple disciples we're going to show the world we're going to show the world we're going to honor him by showing the world what he poured into us mm. Like my man once said, all the critics love you in New hey, York. Yes, Lord. <laughs> How about Houston? How about Houston? <laughs> they love you. <laughs> Got nothing but love for you, my queen. Much Thank continued you. success, okay? Wow. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for having me. Thank you so much. The captivating and super talented Shelby J here on Night Tracks Radio. Remember, family, be sure to get the new single about to be smelling like thanksgiving lord have mercy catch up with her on all our social media as instagram and facebook the real shelby j and also to get her products from hats hoodies t-shirts and the wonderful mug you know the teddy bear has to get his hands on the mugs that's at www.brandedbymjm.com forward slash collections i want to thank everyone for tuning in and tuning out all the negativity. I want to thank you for allowing me in your home. I want to thank all the supporters that are in chat room leaving these fantastic, beautiful, vibing message. Without you, there's no night tracks and there's definitely no teddy bear. We we'll wait for you to see you again. Oh, how foolish of me. Hey, to get to the interview, to listen to the interview, to watch the interview in its entirety, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's at youtube.com forward slash 
Night Tracks with two X's, Night Tracks Radio on YouTube. And you can also find us on TikTok. That's at TikTok at L-O-T-O Radio. The same for Twitter and on Facebook. That's at Facebook.com forward slash L-O-T-O Radio, The Zone. And as in always, keep it so full here on Night Tracks Radio. Peace and many blessings to you.